Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in, Winning Cures Everything. This is the NFL Recap Show for Week 1. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. Chris is uh, is handling the hosting duties today, so, uh, so <laughs> I'll go on and get the advertising mess out of the way. First off, go over to winningcureseverything.com. The picks contest will be up uh, sometime after noon today on Tuesday. We are recording this around 10 a.m. Tuesday after all the Monday night games, after all the Sunday games, etc. So we've got the full NFL slate to get through. Uh, but go over to winningcureseverything.com. Check out the football picks contest page. You can enter in there. Uh, you can win a Tunica prize pack. Next week, I believe, we're going to start with some some different ones, some stuff from different casinos and whatnot, but we'll we'll get to that point. Uh, this next week, though, Tunica Prize Pack. It's a Winning Cures Everything shirt, a Tunica Gateway to the Blues shirt, uh, free tickets to the Tunica Gateway to the Blues Museum, a Tunica golf uh, marker set. I mean, all sorts of stuff. There's there's even more stuff in there, but we'll – you win one of those, it's awesome. So we, we had a guy that won last week, went 10-0 and last week. So you got a lot to deal with here. You better be good at this. So, But it's free to enter. Go on and check it out, winningcureseverything.com. You can find all of our social media, all the places where you can subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Leave some comments. Let us know what you think about the show. Share it out if you would. If you're on Apple Podcasts or any of your favorite podcast apps, leave a review on Apple Podcast. Five stars, written review. We would appreciate that. Uh, the support means a ton to us. The show brought to you by... Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. They have got six incredible sports books. You can find more information on them over at tunicatravel.com. I'm telling you, they got awesome stuff going down there right now. I will be down there this weekend, I believe on Saturday morning, to, uh, to make sure that I get my picks in before the college football slate, which is not a great one, but I did find some lines that I like. We'll see if they stick until Saturday morning. I don't think they will, but we'll see how far they'll go. Back and forth, I would imagine. Chris, let's go on and jump in. Let's talk about the NFL. What uh, what would you like to start off with? All right, start at eleven for the NFL this week. I'm going to start with the New England Patriots. I think this number is the most one, impressive. the New England Patriots. I think it's the most impressive um, display of football that we saw all week. Um, we'll get into some of the other things that were really impressive, but the team they played is a team that a lot of people think to have a bounce back year to make the playoffs. They're a Big name program in the Steelers. Let, let's go over a couple of things. Key losses for the Patriots to start this season. Some of these I'm going to go long. Some of these I'm going to go real quick on. Some of them, no analysts whatsoever, just a, a story to tell and, and we'll move on. But <laughs> with the Patriots, key losses to start this season. Okay. They lost Gronk, the best tight end in the NFL history. They lost Trent Flowers, the best offensive lineman free agent in the NFL this year. And now the Trent Brown, right? Ball. Trent Brown, yeah. Yeah. That was that was said? Yeah, you, you said Trent Flowers. <laughs> oh, Trent Brown. Yeah, well, the next guy, Trey Flowers. Yeah. Right? That's why I get that mixed up. All right. The best pass rusher on the team last year. And their number one draft pick, Nikhil Harry, out uh, right now and, uh, and not playing. Any one of these losses would cripple most teams. They would really, really hurt most teams. This team does not matter. Nope. Now let's talk about how flexible this team is, okay? And we know Bill changes the game plan every week, this and another. But last year, in the last decade, they have built this offense around the tight end position, all right? Last year alone, they played 24 snaps without a tight end on the field, all right? The entire season. Sunday night, they played 25 in one game. Whew. And they looked like they could score on every drive if they want it to. Yeah, they really the, did. The machine just keeps rolling. And what's most impressive about this team is not the offense. It's not the way they look, uh, how efficient they are. This, to me, was the de- was the defense since last year's playoffs. So you're talking about three playoff games and then the opening season against the Steelers, a, a big-time franchise team. Since last year – Starting at the playoffs, going into this year, they've played 16 quarters of football. They've only been scored on in seven of those 16 quarters. If you take field goals out and you only count touchdowns, they've only given up 
five quarters of touchdown where touchdowns were scored in that 16 is, quarters. That's crazy. That's that's you're talking about three playoff games, a Super Bowl, an AFC Championship game, and a divisional game. But that's not against slumps, okay? These are teams that are competing to win the Super Bowl. No, the Chiefs, the Chiefs were in there. I mean, that's yeah, they, they held the Chiefs scoreless the first half. People don't think about that. People remember the shootout at the end and how the Chiefs came back, but 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 but, but they, yeah, they, they held were them scoreless. It was unbelievable. Yeah. So We'll get off the Patriots in a minute. I'm going to give everybody just a little bit of hope, okay? Just a little bit of hope that things might not be as good as they appear after Sunday night, all right? Is this – wait, are you about to go into what we talked about last night? Yep, I, yep, I told you the story last night. Because I believe that this has a better than zero chance percent chance of happening, okay? Okay. This, this is a possibility. This is This is not, you know, just not out of this question, all right? All right. Antonio Brown's living with Tom Brady, and this might be the crack in the foundation that brings the greatest sports dynasty in history down. I wrote this last night. Jealousy is a dangerous thing. Last night, Tom and Antonio share out pictures of them rooming together. And all I could think of is Julian Edelman sitting home alone, wondering why he never got to live with Tommy. (laughs) For the past three years, I fully believe this, by the way. For the past three years, I'm convinced The biggest reason Tom has had the greatest success he's had over the last three seasons where they made three Super Bowls and he struggled in some of these seasons up and down, up and down, was because Julian Edelman believed in him so much. Julian Edelman encouraged him more than anyone else. You see clips of them on the sidelines. They're always together on the field, off the field. I've always said, I've been saying this to my friends for so long, if I could ever find one person to love me the way Julian loves Tom, there's nothing I couldn't accomplish in this world. They've been best friends. I repeat, jealousy is a dangerous thing. <laughs> we could have a hell in a Troy situation here. A one person takes down a dynasty, and it could be Antonio Brown dividing Tom and Jules. Don't let that wedge you guys. But that's the hope that the other 31 teams have. Is, that's that's kind of sad that that is the only hope, right? <laughs> well, I think that is the only hope. That's got to be your hope. That's right. hey, and so I've I've heard all these other uh, sports personalities talking about this. Is it not ridiculous that Tom Brady is 42 years old and this guy looks younger than I do? I mean, he's he's six years older than me. And but he, but he this eats guy, so much better than we do, and he takes care of his body. Yes. This is what drinking and and smoking and wildlife living, yeah. and 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 that that we have done in the past, and we do some now. This is what it does to you. If we ate like him and we worked out like him, I don't know that I would be as pretty as him, but I'd look a hell of a lot better than I look right now. Yeah, I mean, speak for yourself. I would definitely look as pretty, yeah. if not more handsome, <laughs> than Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. But I prefer. To relax in a different way well, than, right. we than Mr. Brady does. Well, I say it all the time. The reason I'll never have true greatness is because I've never made that type of sacrifice. Oh, agreed. Okay. These guys changed their lives for decades to try to get what he has, at least 20 years he's playing. So anyway, yeah. I mean, we'll, it's, we'll it's get ridiculous. off Tommy. We'll get off the Patriots. All right. This, Let's move in. What I think is the most impressive single individual performance of the, of the of the weekend and it might be of the season Gary <laughs> my guy Lamar Jackson would like to tell you personally Bill Polian <laughs> and everybody else who thought he should play receiver or running back or something that you can all kiss his ass okay that's hey that's fine he can say whatever he wants to after that performance but 324 I- yards Passing I'm telling you, five TDs. He went up against the Dolphins team that had quit. That was that was like okay. you know, okay. that was Oklahoma playing Prairie View. Okay, like this, <laughs> I mean, think about all, right. all the reports that have come out about the Dolphins after this game, where they are all that saying that he, this he they, did that to them. Uh, come on, like all of them said, look, this team is trying to tank. These coaches don't give a crap. We want out of here. No, see, the coaches care. The front office doesn't. I think they're working hard to try to win games, and and they got to do it with the talent that they got, and it's just not going to work, and that's fine. But they go into halftime, and this guy is whipping them like nobody's business, and and they they want out. 
They yeah. want out. We ain't taking this butt whipping. You know, if we had to play the Bills, we wouldn't be doing this. And I like the Bills. Maybe, but maybe you're right. They're not doing that to them. Yeah, 324 then, yards passing, five TDs. That doesn't even include, you know, rushing yards and whatnot. Like he didn't, he didn't rush, but like three times for like nine yards. I mean, it was nothing. Yeah, it, it, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing. But it, I'm telling you, with Hollywood Brown there, uh, that is a they opened up that offense in a different kind of way, and man, it, it was impressive. Listen, now we'll see, I've been, you know, I've been on this guy since his sophomore year at Louisville, saying. This dude is going to be a star. This guy is going to be a star. And everyone said, well, he can't throw. Why the hell not? He won a Heisman Trophy. He threw all over the place in the ACC. In the ACC. <laughs> Look, you and I are just going to disagree on this. I don't, I don't know what to when, tell you. When, when I see him do this, you don't play there. When I see him do this against good defenses, then I will absolutely apologize. But what until that point, don't play this, year? this was still the Dolphins that are in complete tank for Tua mode, and I, I will believe it so, when I see it. So right? one of the best defenses in the league this year that, that everybody kind of agrees is going to be the Broncos, and, and they just had like 30 points scored on them by the crappy Raiders, all right? Yeah, yeah. So what good defenses are there, okay? He's I mean, going to do you this to point. everybody. No, I, but I, look. Your Steelers, the Dolphins your Steelers are a are different good defense because that's a divisional opponent. My Browns are they a good defense because that's a divisional opponent. He's gonna play them twice a year. You go, yeah. they gonna stop them because they I, couldn't stop who they played last Sunday. Now that, that, that had something system. to do with Baker Mayfield throwing three picks though. So and we'll get to that in a little bit. But I'm telling you, I, there are yes, other good defenses can have points scored on them. But you cannot sit here and tell me that you think the Dolphins are a good team, a good defense, nope. a good nope. anything. Nope, but I can sit here and tell you that I've been telling you for the last four or five years that Lamar Jackson is really good, and he's going to be a star in this league. That's And and you can continue to, to toot that horn, and I'm all with you. I will defend your right to say it forever, even if I disagree with it. Um, and I, I will, who, I'm asking you the question, who does he have to do it against for you to be impressed? Man, there's all kind of – if he does it against a real team, it doesn't does matter who the team like? is. Uh, right, it it can be the Steelers, it can be the Browns, it can be the Titans, it can be the Jets, even like it, it, teams with a pulse. Anybody, right? Other than the Dolphins, if he comes out and does it again this week, I don't even remember who they play this week. Who I'm looking play? it up. And that's what I'm getting now. That's a <laughs> if he does it again this week. Well, this week he's going to do it against the Cardinals. You're going to say that's not a real team. It, it, okay. it sucks that Patrick Peterson. All right. there. Yeah, so I guess he sucks. But, and hey, then the but week we'll after see. that, he plays the Chiefs. Is the Chiefs a real good team? That the Chiefs are a good team. It's not a great defense. Yeah, he's, oh, see, he's okay. got it. See, that's the problem. You got this caveat, but all these teams have bad defenses. You have got to be kidding me, man. <laughs> there's <laughs> right now. There's one good defense in the NFL. Would and that you, is the New England Patriots. Would you tell me that? the Cardinals or the Chiefs have good defenses? If we weren't talking about Lamar Jackson, would you say that they have good defenses? I think the Chiefs are fine. Yeah, they're, they're fine, I guess, but they did just have I'm a telling, rookie quarterback. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you what teams do have good defenses because the teams I thought had good defenses look like shit. Yeah, no, you're right about that. So uh, nobody has a good defense. Uh, the nobody. Packers and the Bears have good defense. <laughs> no, nah, I don't know that the Packers have it. We'll get to them. I don't know that the Packers have a good defense. The yeah. Bears have a good defense, but I also don't know about that either because the Let's Packers' see. offense could just be crappy. All right, so they play Arizona at home this week. They play at Kansas City. Then they got Cleveland. They got at the Steelers. They got the Bengals. But they the got Cleveland's at Seattle. Three. If Cleveland's 0-3 again, oh, uh, oh, that's not a real team either. So now, so now they're gonna go like a month and a half and not play anybody, and you're still gonna disrespect. Them. Again, Cleveland was not a defensive issue, so much as it was, uh, it it kind of snowballed on them, right? But we'll do we want to go on and move off Lamar? Nope, nope. Okay, Lamar's, Lamar's best. All that he did, all he did, <laughs> he stepped up to the podium after the game. Not bad for a running back. I liked it. Yeah, right, well, he on. he definitely he, that was the perfect time for him to come back and and get his piece in, and right. I'm I'm so for that. I thought it was entertaining as hell. I loved it. So next, I'm gonna try to convince you, everybody listening, that karma is real, and it came for the assholes of the NFL this week. Okay, all right. Some more than others. Joe Mixon, you hit a woman about the face, whacked. Yeah, leg blew all up. He's probably going to be back. He'll be fine. This isn't like real justice, okay? 
no, no, no victim is feeling better and nobody's actually, but, but nobody's feeling sorry for these bastards. All right. Tyreek Hill beat up a woman and a kid whacked out for a little bit. This is, this is just makes me feel better about the world to know that there's there's some semblance of bad things happening to bad people. Okay. 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 The other two, not on that level in completely different situations, but Jameis Winston, he is a worthless human being in society, right? <laughs> he's a multiple time sexual offender. He, yeah. he just he's just an overall grade A jerk. All right. Just a just a bad human being. And not even the Lord and Savior of quarterbacks, Bruce Arians, can keep him from setting his career on fire. Yeah. A, a team, the 49ers, a team that had two interceptions the entire year last year, 16 games, two interceptions. Jameis, that plays them, they got three. They got two three people. and took two of them to the house. This, this just this, this guy. I, I'm just ready for his career to be over, and I hope that the football karma just keeps coming at him. And then the last one, Big Ben. Another I don't trash. don't do it. Don't do it. Don't Another do tra- it. He, he's a trash human being, and he's a diva. Okay, you can't say don't do it. Don't do it. We had videotape evidence, and then half the video got cut off and missed. All right, we know he dro- he had some dudes drag some girl into a bathroom. We saw that happen. Then we saw the dudes come out and stand outside the door, and then the video cuts off. That all happened, okay? Then this girl said he raped her. So so I, I think all the evidence says he raped this girl, all right? I think he's a bad human being, and I think we are seeing that his career is coming to an end. Here's what I think about Big Ben, all right? I think he is nothing more than a product of outstanding talent around him. His entire career, he started off the season, with Heinz, his career with Heinz Ward and the bus, he ended up, Getting uh, San Antonio Holmes, and he was a freak. He yeah. was a student, and, and, and then he's progressed into Le- Le'Veon Bell and Antonio Brown, and and without stars, I'm talking the top, top, top of the NFL elites at those positions to carry him. This is what he is. He's nothing. He's nobody. I, I think this might be a slight overreaction to the beatdown by the Patriots, who oh, we all agree are the best team in the NFL right now. I, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think we're going to see him. I think we're going to see this happen to him a lot. I don't think he's very good at football. Well, they they host the Seahawks this week, and that will be a massive game for for both sides because for the Seahawks games, didn't look yeah. very good against the Bengals in Week One. No, we'll get to that. So I, I will say this: Le'Veon Bell. He's a nut, okay? Le'Veon Bell's a, just a complete nut. Nobody's going to argue with him on that, right? If you're calling him a nut, what do you call an A.B.? Antonio Brown, he's a nut. I mean, these guys are nuts, right? They're, they're, yes. they're just complete nut cases. They're, they're certifiable. Big Ben lost his nuts, and now he's no good. <laughs> That's Sorry. pretty good. That's pretty good. Sorry. That's, just how, that's, that's the way I see it. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. We'll move off them. Okay. <laughs> Number four, <laughs> when kissing sisters today. is really good for one person and not good for the other. Things get awkward fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they're getting real weird. Arizona has to be ecstatic, ecstatic that they did not lose Kyler Murray's first game, Cliff Kingsbury's first game. Woo, we didn't lose. Yeah. We didn't lose. Man, we're starting off the season. The NFL's tough. Detroit, God. They needed this win. They needed it so bad. You know what I needed? I needed the under. That's what I needed under 47 in that game. And what was it? 24 to 3 at one yeah. point in the fourth quarter? I mean, it, or 24 to 6, whatever it was. Either way. It was either 3 or 6. Yeah, they either had a field goal, two and, field goals or one. And yeah. it comes down to a two point conversion at the end of the game where if they don't get the two point conversion, I hit the under. And if yeah, they, it's ball game. If they yeah, it's ball it. game, but it's but I also hit the under. Like if they do hit the two point conversion, not only do we have overtime, but it busts the over. So, <laughs> so of course I'm watching it and I'm like, they didn't do anything for the entire game, and then all yeah. of a sudden the Lions let Kyler Murray figure it out. Like what? What are we doing here? Which I think is, what I saw this weekend was, and this was actually in in college and in the NFL is some of these teams just aren't conditioned well at all. 
I mean, you just yeah. saw fourth quarter collapses all over the place. And, and the better team kind of won a lot of these games because the worst team, but the fact that the worst team got out and what we think the worst team was before the season started, obviously, but the fact that the worst team got out so quickly on the better team, just, I, I just don't know who came into week one prepared at all. Yeah. Um, but that was, that was a situation where I think the lions just got gassed. I think they were just, their defense played great. And then all of a sudden their defense ran out of gas. They need to get conditioned. TJ Hawkinson, by the way, yeah, superstar. I mean, good well, gracious. I, all right, so I'm, I agree with that, but I, I want to see him play a better defense. That that is yeah, somebody, I agree. because tight end is one of those positions where rookies just don't come in the league and do well. Uh, well and it, Hawkinson, if he's going to do that week in and week out, then then he is an anomaly. Now, Gronk I don't expect it to be every week, but that people said that he was the most like Gronk of any tight end in this class. And, and he might be. He he, might he be. looked just like him. I mean, it was it was crazy to watch. So, uh, besides that bad beat, uh, you were talking about, you know, the the better teams getting out to whatever leads and he just didn't know who's prepared and who's not. So that that Colts Chargers game, which are, are we going to hit on that? Do you want to nope. No, nope, you not, can you talk about it now. Okay, but I don't have so Philip Rivers drives me insane, and and stuff like this is the reason why he hasn't made a Super Bowl. Why people are hesitant to put him on all time great lists, all that kind of stuff. Where the the Chargers are driving down the field, and they are up by a touchdown already, right? So they're they're up by eight. And what was it, 31 to 20, or 30 to 22, 30 to whatever it was. And they're about to score. They're inside the 10 yard line. And with five minutes left in the game, he throws an interception in the end zone. Now, the interception was insane. Uh, Hooker got a just a one handed grab, didn't even. Didn't even try and secure it with the other hand. He just swooped in from the side and grabbed it. But at that point, they would have been up by two touchdowns. This was my my other bad beat, right? So I I lost the Bears. I went two and three in my my gambling picks this week. I lost the under basically by one point because it, let's forget overtime. Had they not made that two point conversion, I would have hit the under in the Lions Cardinals. But with this one, I had the Chargers minus six and a half, and if they score this touchdown, they are up fifteen points with. You know, five minutes left in the game, four and a half minutes, whatever it is, and my minus six and a half is looking pretty good. And instead, he throws a pick in the end zone. I mean, but you said it yourself that he. I mean, the the defensive player made a hell of a move on the ball. Oh, he absolutely did. There's there's less than two or three DBs in the league that are going to make that play and actually pick it off. Agreed. I think that. But if you look, that's fine on the quarterback. If you look back at the film, Rivers stared down this receiver. And, yes, it looked like a wide-open throwing lane, but he never looked off anybody. He never looked at, at anything other than the receiver. I he looked exactly Mike where Williams he was going go the whole time. This, I think having Mike Williams go out of this game hurt bad because there aren't a lot oh, of agree. guys that he trust. Yeah. Okay? He, he's only had one real season with with uh, Hunter, and, and that was two years ago. Um, and, and so I don't know how much rapport is still there uh, with that situation. Keenan Allen – is the guy he trusts the most, but he's hurt all the time. Um, and now Mike Williams goes out of this game. I, I don't I don't know that there's a level of trust. And so when he's staring somebody down, man, that's just the guy he's got because he just don't trust anybody else. Yeah. Especially in the situation. It took a hell of a move on the DB to make the to make the play. I, I do I, agree. I don't with know you. that I blame the quarterback when that happens. I, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Either way, they did win the ball game. They won by six in overtime, which did not cover by half a point. So you're going to have those sometimes, but, man, it irritated the crap out of me when I started out 2-0 and on the day and everything looked good in the Lions-Cardinals and in the Chargers-Colts. I was like, I'm about to be 4-0 and today. I'm about to, I'm going good. And then Phillip Rivers does that, and the Lions defense just completely craps out. It was it was In the awful. NFL, you don't always want to lead early. No, so you, you got that every, right. Every game I covered was massive comebacks. So. Uh, yeah, I, I understand that. I understand that. So right. that's, hey, one of the ones that I did cover was the Vikings. You want to hit on the Vikings? That's what I'm about to say. That's next. Number right. five. The Vikings are exactly who we thought they were, you and I. And the Falcons may still be broken from the Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, I I will tell you this. Uh, 
I had Kirk Cousins on one of my fantasy teams. Man, he threw the ball ten times. Yep. That's all he had to do. But that's all he had to do. They're yeah. going to run the football down people's throat this year. Yeah. That's just what they're going to do. Now, there's some teams they won't be able to do that on. Oh, but, I don't know. I mean, people think that – see, this is what you keep saying. People think the Falcons are going to have a really good defense, that they got all their guys back, and they're healthy Who ever said and that the Falcons were going to have a good defense? A lot of people believe that in the NFL. They, they have the never had a good defense under Dan Quinn. All their, yes, because they are all their injuries was the reason they were bad last year. It's all I've heard all offseason. And now they got all those guys back, and they're all healthy, and they're going to be much improved. They're going to be really well, good. That, you can improve and still not be a good defense. I don't think they improved, and I don't think they're good. I didn't think they no. were going to be good. They're, we they're lying. We caught a lot of hell on on, on Facebook and and on uh, on YouTube, YouTube about not picking them to be great. And and Matt Ryan was just as good last year as he was his MVP year. He just he just didn't have the touchdowns and yada yada. But it's all bull. It's all bull. You yeah. can make up state. Yeah, he's got he's got a bunch of yards. He didn't have the wins. He didn't have the touchdowns. And the last time I thought I, I watched football, touchdowns causes wins, not yards. And and you can get over yourself. And yeah. that defense isn't good. And that team's not great. Now we think the Vikings are really good. Now the, here's the big issue with the Vikings. Uh, they have got to keep Dalvin Cook healthy. Like period. He's True. incredible. But I think that offensive scheme is going to – I love Dalvin Cook. I love Dalvin Cook. I've seen Gary Kubiak lose big-time offensive linemen and running backs, and still the machine keeps going. Yeah, they, they can find Kubiak a way to make it – they're it right. running his style of offense, then then I, I think whoever runs the rock is going to be successful. I yeah. just, but I've always been that way. I believe in coaches and I believe in systems. Yeah, so. I, I can understand that. I mean, there's a reason it, it works for – you know, teams that have got it and teams that don't, right? Right. All right. Got Number it. six, 2018 MVP doesn't look like he slowed down at all. That's, Everyone just know, thought Patrick Mahomes was going to regress. Yeah. He was going to lose something because you can't throw 50 touchdowns every year and you can't throw for 10,000 yards all the time and it's going to go backwards. I don't know if he's going backwards, man. No. He went to Jacksonville in the heat, in the humidity against a defense that everybody thinks – is pretty damn good. And he cut them up. 378 yards, three touchdowns. And I don't know that that's an anomaly. All you know, the he's touchdowns on track. To, to Sammy Watkins. Which Well, but I don't know that, that that won't ever happen again because they just spread the ball out too much. That, that yeah. was just a matchup in this game that mattered. Yeah, but and they'll find a different one in the next one. That's right. And, and Sammy might get one or two the next game, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to just be – Feeding the beast, and the beast is the offense, the machine. And the next man up, somebody's going to score. They're all fast. They're all athletic. Patrick is incredible. He's on pace for 48 touchdowns. And if you don't think he can hit that mark, keep betting against it. Yeah. Because I, I don't, I'm, I'm not picking against this kid. No, I, I don't blame you. I, I picked them to go 10 and six because I thought, okay, well, people will eventually catch up to him. Um, I think I was probably dead wrong. Yeah, like I, I think I'm, I'm twelve and four, thirteen and three, and 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 I I'm I'm happy standing pat right there. Yeah, I can understand it. So, All right, right, who we got seven. next? This this shows that I am an objective observer, and I don't always put my biases to things. Dallas Cowboys look like they are the kings of the NFC right now. We went into this season Ooh, thinking yeah. the NFC was going to be way better than the AFC, and after week one of football, now it's only one week. But one week of football, I don't know that I agree with that at all. I think the Cowboys are a lot better than most of the rest of the NFC teams I saw Sunday. Yeah, I, I agree with you there. I agree with you. They looked uh, – the offense with uh, with Kellen Moore running that thing. I told you there was, a, there was a percentage chance that this offense was going to be way different than anything we expected because Kellen Moore's got that – College background, he's going to bring that college thing, and it was either going to be really exciting and good or really bad. Do you think that Zeke coming back had anything to do with this offensive uh, explosion? Or uh, No, and I actually think they were planning on doing everything they did without Zeke because they that's, didn't know they could get that deal done. That's kind of what I thought. Like <laughs> it, it looked like they were going to be able to do this anyway. And yeah, I don't – if the offense is rolling like this, I don't know that he's worth the money that they gave him. Uh, 
I mean, he well, the money's there and it's done. So here's yeah. the question I have for them. This is a hard salary cap league, all right? Yeah. And Jerry's already locked up a couple offensive linemen. Got a lot, Zeke locked up. Got a lot of defensive linemen. You got Jalen Smith locked up. up. Yeah. Yeah. So that there's only so much money. It's not that Jerry's got the deepest pockets in the world. This is a hard cap. You can't spend more than you're you're allotted. He got to, after the performance that we saw Sunday, you got to get Dak locked up now. This is where they messed up. They they let golf and Wentz and these other guys set the market, and then he comes out, has a game that he's had, and now you're going to have to overpay Dak now. Yeah, you you're got to overpay Dak because uh, you're going to have to pay him at least 30, right? If, and Dak oh, wants well, 40. He turned out 30. What are you talking about? They offered him 30 already. He I know. It, it, that's here. what I'm saying. At least 30, probably 40. Probably closer to 35 is what we'll look at. So well, 35. 40, so we'll see how, how, how much he bends. And I'm going to tell you this. The best thing that happened for Cowboys Sunday, Michael Gallup breaking out the way he did yeah. because there's not enough money to sign everybody, and I think Cooper's going to be odd man out. See what I'm what I'm curious about is if it, what they what they need, and I know that this is going to sound a little bit goofy. They need Cooper to get hurt to see, like just for a game, like he tweaks an ankle, whatever. To see, I mean, I don't know about that. You didn't need to, you didn't need Antonio Brown to get hurt to know Juju Smith is a stud. Well, He's agreed, but but then it, I'm with you. But this offense has looked. So much different. Dak has looked so much different with Amari Cooper on the field, and it doesn't. This is like, different Amari doesn't than have it was to. Last year, Amari doesn't have to catch all the passes, but I think it it gives Dak more confidence. It makes him a better player. I, I don't know that I agree with that at all. I think Amari is valuable to this team. I think Amari is good. I'm not. I'm not crapping on him. But at some point in time, you can't spend on everybody, and it doesn't matter if he can survive without Amari or not. Then you just have to find another Amari because you can't afford all of them. Yeah. That's just, that's no, just I'm, the I'm way it is. I, you I can't think... buy everybody. Somebody's either got to take a discount or you you, you, you got to let somebody go. And if Gallup looks the way he continues to look, which I think he is, I think Gallup's the better receiver overall. I, I, I have felt that way before the season started. Um and, and so there's no question that I would I would not pay. But I also think you can find wide receivers all over the place. Yeah, we in the NFL we saw that we see that every year. So, um, but I think now they got themselves in a pickle. See, I think Jerry lost the fight with Zeke. He probably could have paid him less earlier, getting the deal done. Not getting the deal done with Zach will cost him more money. If if that continues to put up the numbers he's putting up, he might he might have to shell out the forty. Yeah, he, he might not he get a discount to. whatsoever. Yeah, he he may have to because that I mean that was that was an impressive performance and it was equally uh, unimpressive by the Giants. I mean, it oh was, yeah, now the Giants are also one of those teams that are just a nothing burger right now. Yeah, they, they just are. And if you think Daniel Jones would have looked better, I, I wish no. This was not an Eli was Manning thing. This no, was, this is a this is a that football team is still real bad. Yeah, they, this bad. is this is going to be a a building thing for for the Giants yes. for a little while. Now That's it could right. be that they went up against you know maybe the best team in the NFC. Correct, but eh, I mean they they looked completely overwhelmed in this matchup, and they they really haven't over the years. I I just don't see them competing with many teams in this league. I just I just don't. I might be wrong on that. So I I, right. I think I agree with you. Number eight, we'll roll through these. Number eight. Teams that all won that I know nothing about. I, I still didn't get any read on whatsoever by watching them play. I watched every snap of almost every one of these games. Went back and watched the All-22, stayed up late last night on a lot of these. Having the Sunday ticket allows you to do that. It's, it's pretty fun. It's really nice. <laughs> and, and I still don't know a damn thing about any of these guys. Yeah. We'll run down the list, and then I'll ask the question about all of them that I have. Okay. 14. Packers, Eagles. Seahawks, Niners. All right. So we'll start with the Packers Thursday night. It feels like it was a decade ago. It really does. Is this defense any good, or is Mitchell Trubisky just that bad? See, everybody on that broadcast wanted to give Petten so much credit. I, and, I know. And, they were blowing them up. Yeah, and, and the additions on defense are, I, man, this defense is so improved. And that are, I'm wondering if, if Trubisky took a step back uh, oh, because – it. I, I didn't really believe in him the first two years anyway. Like, he obviously – his stats improved last year. 
But, right. man, it, coming out looking like that in the first game, remember they didn't play him a ton in the preseason, which most starting they quarterbacks didn't play many don't. They in the preseason. Yeah, he, he didn't play – at all, he oh. and I, I wonder if maybe that had something to do, that to do with that Rams thing where nobody plays and what the hell are you doing? But it, it makes it where the majority, I bet two thirds of the defenses in this league, if you've got any kind of run support, anybody that like a decent front seven, you will be able to stack the box against oh, the Bears. Oh, oh yeah, and and then you got to dare Trubisky to beat you, and I don't think that. I don't think he can do it. And it's not like the Packers have this fantastic secondary or anything like that. They they got some guys, but this is a run-of-the-mill defense. That's right. And yeah. I've I, read a lot about how they're much improved and they're going to be one of the better defenses in the league. Look, I'll believe it when I see it. Yeah, I, but did, I, did you I, hear not, any of that? You're not telling me what happened Thursday night. Yeah, is, I was about to say, did you hear any of that before Thursday? Yeah, there was the two writers that you know I follow the most are Robert Mays and, and, and Kevin Clark for the Ringer. Yeah. They both they both preseason thought that uh, this defense was going to be one of the best defenses in the NFL. I, once again, I I need to see that. I don't know that I believe that. And and you know I, I could be wrong. They could be lights out all year long, and that's great. I, I just think there's a. I think we live in a world where Mitchell is just that bad. I mean, I, I I think I agree with you. I think I agree right. with you. We'll move on to the Eagles. Okay. How in the hell do you trail the Redskins 17 points going into halftime? Now, I know you came out and you scored 25 unanswered. Yeah. This is a team that I thought was going to be really bad, and, and the Eagles are a team that I thought is going to compete for a Super Bowl. Man, they look like they haven't practiced at all the first half. Well, let, Nobody let me, the same team. Let me give you a different side of this. Okay. Uh, the Eagles, Carson Wentz, first game action since going out middle last year, right? Because Foles was was the starting quarterback for the playoff run. Wentz, it took a little time to get back into the fold. They didn't want to play him in preseason because they don't want him to get injured. You know, they're they're being wary with him. Now in the second half, he looked like an MVP quarterback. That's but right. But the Redskins, remember when that defense is healthy. That is a really good defense, and we've seen Case Keenum be good before. I think the main issue was you don't know what to expect with the Redskins right now, and it's going to catch some teams by surprise. Like this is still, you know, this is a it's always a seven and nine, eight and eight football team. That's that's what they always are. And no, I don't think they're going to be that good this year because I think eventually Keenum falls off. I don't think the running game is very good, especially with Darius Geis out now. It, it's the Redskins can be uh, a problem for some teams because their defense still has a ton of talent, but eventually, you know, they're they're going to fall off like they do every season. They get off to a hot start, but the Eagles, you know, I think it took a little time to get back into the fold. I think Wentz, you know, once he got his bearings about him, he looked really, really good. I mean, that second half was was something to behold. I don't know. I don't know. I need to. I need to see them play somebody else. And and I don't know that I believe in the Eagles right now. I, I'm you know they play the Lions at home this week. You're talking about a desperate team that, yeah. that's got to play better in Detroit. And man, I just I don't know that I know the answer to this because the Eagles just didn't look impressive at all. So coming back scoring 25 unanswered against a team that I don't think is very good anyway just doesn't do anything for me. Could be dead wrong. We can see them hoist the Lombardi again. So that's that's you know I think that they were really good before the season started. So I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm team, not ready to sell any of my stock after after one week. Next team, Seattle. Yeah. Now Ooh. here's my Ooh. question for them. This doesn't really have so much to do with the play on the field or any of this. This is the last I don't know four or five years. Is the twelfth man dead? Can we stop them from raising that flag? Because I don't know that anybody's afraid to go up to Seattle and punch them in the face like it, they used to be. Yeah, it don't seem like it, does it? I mean, there was a day and a time where you just didn't do that. And you're a bad team like Cincinnati or a really young, inexperienced team like Cincinnati and a young, inexperienced coach like Cincinnati. You go up there, you get beat by 20, 30. I mean, you just get your tail handed to you, sent back across the world. Now, wait, think about this, though. We've Nobody seen this so many times with, you know, teams like the Bengals, teams like, you know, teams that we think are going to be complete trash that come out like the Redskins did, right? 
Yeah. Uh, and the Bengals, we thought were going to be complete trash. And they still might be, but they come out week one. You don't really know what to expect. They still got NFL dudes, right? Like, we make right. fun of Andy Dalton, but he's always been a pretty average quarterback. And he, well, he's, like a, no, he is, he's not a bad quarterback. He is an average quarterback. Yeah, he's an average quarterback. And when he had Tyler Eifert last year, you know, not that Eifert did anything, you know, amazing in this ball game, but when he had Eifert and that threat, it made the offense better. I mean, they were the number one passing offense in the league through like the first five weeks last year before they lost him. And then you come out this, of course, no AJ Green. Like it, it is what it is. But I think they threw in some wrinkles that maybe the Seahawks weren't expecting. I expected that Seahawks offense to look a little bit better. But that was one thing that we talked about in the preseason was Brian Schottenheimer's offense is that's an issue. Like and and they didn't do anything to to solve it. Right. I'm very interested to see this game in Pittsburgh this week. Yeah. Against the Steelers. I, I just I don't believe in either one of those teams right now. I know one team is one and zero, the other team's zero and one, and I don't know that either one of them are good. I, I think you might be right. You might be so, right. All right. Who's last team yeah. on your team to you know nothing about? And the last team is the 49ers. Uh, I tell you the stat about how they've only had two interceptions last year. They got three this week. Man, I th- that defense carried them to a, an ugly win. This could just be a situation where Tampa Bay is tr- just garbage. They're bad. They're just a bad football team. And Bruce or, or anyone else can't save them. Okay. Yeah. And 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 I don't know what that means for the 49ers. They couldn't get the run going. They couldn't really get any offense whatsoever going. Nobody on offense looked good. Not a single player. Um, and 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 I just don't know where that leaves them. Um, good thing they got a good, nice road win across the country because I don't see them get many road wins, and I think some home wins are going to be hard to come by. Yeah, I, I think I agree with you 100. percent 100. percent We'll we'll wrap this up. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little deep into number nine, and then number 10, and 11, we'll get out of here pretty quick. Okay. okay. I'm about to make a comparison. Let me give a caveat to something that entails us watching a game on TV, and and something in real life that is a serious thing when it's real. Okay. Okay. It's just an analogy. You don't have to beat me up. I know this weekend somebody, a sports writer, wrote about the LSU Texas game and they said something about it being a war. And then like 900 people came out and was like, Yes, yeah, not war. You've never seen your buddy blow his leg off. And thinking he's a writer. He's trying to tell a story. Yeah. That's all he's doing. Okay. So, so demean one thing or make fun of one thing. So I'm about to do that and just telling a story. All right. <laughs> go Gary, ahead. Go ahead. I'm trapped in an abusive relationship and I refuse to leave. Okay. Yeah. So I was basically born a Boston fan. All right. I grew up with the Red Sox. I grew up the Celtics. Patriots were the NFL team of Boston. I grew up a Patriots fan. Yeah. Naturally, I choose the Patriots and, and, and I'm a Boston fan. They're they're like they're like my mom in this situation. You have to love your mom, okay? Yeah. You, you don't have a choice. Like, she's always going to be your mom. That's always going to be the teens of my youth. Nothing will ever change that, okay? Never going to get away with it. When they're bad, they're bad. When they're good, they're good, and I'm always going to love them. Cleveland, on the other hand, Cleveland is a team that I chose. I made this choice when I was about nine years old in 1991. My uncle who taught me football who explained the game to me and taught me almost everything I know about it, saw the Giants win the Super Bowl. He said, you see that little guy right there, that short guy? That's the real genius of this team. You follow him. You want to know where good football is going, you follow that guy. So in 1991, after that Super Bowl, the Cleveland Browns hired Bill Belichick. And I said, I'm going to pull from them. I like them too. And I was a child, and I really enjoyed them. Lost the team. And, and I had a way out. I had an opportunity to get out of this relationship. They left me. Yeah. And then they came back in 1999. And you couldn't and help said, yourself. I, I'm going to go at this again. And from 1999, there have been some bad years. They beat me up physically. They put me down emotionally. But I can't leave them. Every now and then, they put some of that good loving on me. And it makes me forget all about it. This offseason, they promised me they changed. They yeah. swore they wouldn't do it again. And I just needed to trust them. And they would prove that they were different. Gary, they're not different. They're not different. 
I was wrong. And you know what? In a couple of weeks, it might be this Sunday, Monday. They play Monday Night Football. might be next Sunday. It, it, sometime this year, they're going to put some of that good loving on me. It's going to be nasty, and it's going to be amazing, and it's going to change my life. And I'm going to forget all about But right now, right now it sucks. And you know it sucks, and you still can't get past it. Like, you still can't get – you want to get away from it, but you can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't leaving. I ain't leaving. That <laughs> was uh, that was a beatdown. And it, here's the thing: it was a relatively close game I know. until it started to get away from them. Baker, and and Baker, Baker Mayfield Baker trying to be a hero. Well, and, and and there was nothing else that they could do. Right? He had to try and be a hero because 18 penalties. I mean, that when when I talked in the off season about undisciplined, too many egos, you know, this could be a problem. Like, they got a lot of talent, but they got to find a way to reel it in. They are obviously having problems reeling this it in. This had potential to be a disaster all along. Yes. And, and who, I knew who was that. The guy, I knew that going into it. But who, I want to have fun with the hype. I want to be a part of it. Of course. Because I didn't want to doubt my team. I didn't want to be not all in on this thing. No, and, it makes sense. It Man, makes perfect it sense. They could get this turned around and it'd be all different. But today, today, Ooh. right now, how do I feel today? Today it sucks. And have you today looked at their sucks. their schedule the rest of the way? Yeah. Well, for the last the the recent, I don't I don't the whole season. I know most of it, but I mean, this week they got the uh, uh, in two weeks uh, they've got the Jets at Monday Night Football. Two weeks they got the Rams yeah. Sunday Night Football. Then they play the Ravens. Like it. Then they got the 49ers. If they don't beat the Jets. There's a strong possibility that this team, like even if they do beat the Jets, it, and it's a close game, something like that. Like it, there's a they real could possibility. They be three and one after the first quarter of the season. Hey, yeah, they they could be one, one and six, three, two and five, something like that. And um, they'll they'll beat the 49ers. That listen, that 49ers team ain't real good. I know that. If they can't beat the 49ers, I'm gonna be pissed. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pissed. But but, off. but say you beat the 49ers. Say say you go. Say two and five. At that at that point in time, yeah, we're two and five, and you're out of the division we're race. We lose the Seahawks. Oh, I don't know about that. Well, yeah, we probably are because the Ravens look good. Yeah, anyway, Ravens look good. I mean, you know, it's a bad. This, this, it was just an ugly, ugly game. So here was my fear while I was watching it. All right. Okay. I got this. I got this thing in my head, and I see him throwing all these picks, and I just think he doesn't have a history of doing this. He didn't do it in college. He didn't do it last year a lot. Now he had some overthrows. That's a rookie thing. I just – if he's turning into Jameis, I can't live with that. I don't I don't think it's a Jameis thing. I think, you know, when you, you get to the I end believe. of the game – You know some guys are just born that way. They just can't help but give the ball to the other team. Yeah, but I don't think that's Mayfield. I, I think that this was – the game got away from him and – he, but it only got away from him because of him. No, 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 no. It was it was already pretty bad, but it was because of penalties and whatnot, right? So he was but constantly even, even at all that, it was still a one score game. And yeah. then he turns the ball over and they score on that. No, he was he was behind and then he turns the ball over and they score on that. No, it, look, I'm, what I'm saying, he was behind the numbers constantly, right? It it felt like every drive started out first and twenty. And when you put a like a, a second year quarterback in a position like that, you're going to have these problems pop up, especially because you had to throw. The Titans well, were yeah, not yeah, going yeah, to let Chubb to, run on. Start them. off, yeah, first and twenty, second and twenty. Yeah, you're right. You're you can't run the ball from there. You're so exactly it, right. so long as they get the penalties cleaned up, I think he will be fine. The question is, can they get the penalties cleaned up? And that that guy that uh, that got kicked out for kicking the Titans player in the head. Yeah. What in the world? Like it, you could see this thing unraveling early. You know, <laughs> it was just it, it was it was a tough game to this watch. This is what you get when you have fiery coaches that coach with anger and yelling and screaming and, and things of that nature. And you got a and, bunch of fiery dudes. And right? you have some coaches that even when they're excitable, but they're always positive and they're not yellers and screamers, or they're just cool even kill look like nothing phases them um but you know but the hotheads in freddie kitchens is a hothead doesn't mean he can't be a great coach but but i kind of expect undisciplined when when 
when you rule with yelling and screaming and fear. So. Yeah. All right, let's end this thing. Hey, let's end, before we 11. do that, before we do that, let's turn a positive spin on the Titans. That was pretty impressive by them to be able to come out and do that. Uh, second, with Delaney Walker back in the fold, Marcus Mariota is a different quarterback when that dude is on the field. And this team has got weapons on offense, and their defense looks nasty. Like, it, this Titans team, people have been underrating them all season. I told you that before. I like the Titans this year. I think they got a great shot to win the AFC South now. Well, well, right now they're they're firmly supplanted in the number one spot. Yep, you got the that only right. team that's one and zero. So there you go. All right, top five, bottom five. Okay, I'll give you, I'll give you mine. You can give me yours. Top okay. five, pretty simple. And this this is this goes to show me that the top three are all AFC teams. And you could convince me to to move one here or there, but based on week one, only based on what we saw week one, no preconceived notions, no preseason rankings, none of that. I watch football. I've seen all 16 games, Patriots, Ravens, Chiefs, Cowboys, Vikings. Who you got? Well, very similar to yours. Uh, I've got Patriots, Chiefs, Cowboys, Titans, Vikings. I'm leaving the Ravens. Uh, back a little bit, and so I'm Just I'm waiting. Keep doubting him. Keep doubting him. I'm gonna keep doubting him. But I, that that performance was incredible. But it's just like in college football when you play a nobody, you got to show me a little more. You know, I, I got to see on more. The other side still live in big houses. This is not this is not Prairie View. Okay, those are still professional football players. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm just saying, like I, I, it, I, mean, I it looked like that team agree. quit. He played at a high school. I mean, you know, he he, he came from nowhere. <laughs> who's uh, right. who's your bottom five? Bottom five, and this is thirty-two through twenty-eight. Yes. Dolphins, so very Giants. very bottom first, which uh, Dolphins for both, right? Dolphins, Giants, Bucks, Browns, Steelers. I actually have the exact same bottom five. I that guys, is, it, that it, is what I saw from the performances this week. Yeah, it was it was pretty bad. It was bad. pretty bad. So everybody else seemed, you know, at least somewhat average. They uh, showed fight. That's yeah, all they, I needed. I needed some teams to show fight. Yeah, the Steelers did not. None of the these Browns teams showed fight at all. Did not. Bucks. Uh, the Bucks had some fight, but man, it's with Jameis well, in there. I was like, just about to say they've got cement shoes and they're trying to swim. Yeah, uh, the Giants look like a dumpster fire, and then the Dolphins are uh, unequivocally the the worst team in the NFL. Yep. Not even close. All right. Man. That wrap it up? Let's go. All right. That wraps it up. That is the NFL recap for week number one. We'll be back again tomorrow with previews, picks, all sorts of stuff. Stick with us all week long, all season long. Get your picks in for the Pick'em Contest. Uh, go over to winningcureseverything.com to do that. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever your favorite app is. Knock it out there. Leave a nice review for us. Make sure you comment uh, over at YouTube and hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you guys for hanging out with us. We'll see you again tomorrow.